Hello my friend, today I'm going to share how to improve your realist oil painting techniques and um, you'll see me paint this artwork titled The Sunshine. This painting is about feelings of joy. First thing to know is that you need to understand what your inspiration is, where it comes from. And then uh, just take a few elements that you want to bring into your art. And to do so, I rely on my photography to record my inspirational note. I often get inspired by nature, classical art, and um, my travel visits to museums and uh, historical places. European churches uh, have a lot of art and nature always offers lots of uh, different color schemes that I then use in my painting. I also enjoy looking at art by other artists. The second thing to remember is to pay more attention to the design of your art I often make a series of sketches and I usually complete a full drawing just to figure out uh, the composition and the overall theme for the piece. Then I simply transfer the outlines from my sketch onto my panel. I go uh, through the leafing process. You, you don't have to do that. It just I like uh, the effect of uh, silver because I want my painting to have some magic and leafing helps me to achieve that. Third thing to remember is that you need to control your color and basically stick to a specific color scheme to unite all the elements and uh, colors together. For instance, in my case, the color scheme is yellow, light blue, and um, all the colors are basically shades of these two colors. Here you see me painting the lock. I took this uh, image from my travels. I think I saw this uh, lock in Spain and I really loved the design and I wanted to incorporate it into my painting. Here you can see me uh, adding a little bit of uh, bluish paint. Uh, mixed with grays and browns uh, to produce a unified effect. After that, I fill in all the lemons in the picture. I use the same colors throughout uh, to keep it consistent with the overall color scheme of my painting. Number four is um, to study the anatomy. I don't really have the gift of uh, painting the anatomy correctly. What you see here is my experience of doing that for so many years. I used to uh, draw stick figures, but um, because I put so much effort into it, uh, depicting the figure, I'm getting better and better at doing that. So please don't think that just because you think you cannot do it, it's impossible. It is possible, but you need to spend a lot of time and practice every day to achieve the results that you want to have in your art. Here you see how I begin painting in full color. I 
recorded my progress painting the lips and um, basically what I'm looking at is the light uh, for instance I uh, place the darkest uh, areas first which are the corners of the mouth and um, then I see where I have the mid-tones and um, I look at the highlights so in the first layer I have three values, the darks, the mid-tones, and the highlights. After that, I will develop the transitions. I've compressed this video, but I think I spent at least an hour just painting the lips. So something that looks uh, very simple is not that fast and simple. Um, it also uh, takes a lot of time and practice for me to do this. Also, it's important to keep the edges very soft and not to outline everything. I tend to outline um, stuff myself, but the softer the edges, the more realistic it's going to look. After painting the lips, I just move up to uh, the next area right next to the mouth I don't jump around my painting I uh, tend to tile um, the paint because it helps uh, to mix the right uh, color value and color temperature by mixing uh, those uh, colors right next to already applied paint as you can see, I use a small brush, I think it's number two, around, and uh, I place strokes uh, following the form, and um, to make the correct stroke, you need to be aware of the muscle structure of the face, and because the strokes uh, change often, depending on the rotation and the position of the muscles in the face. The skin tones have light values and um, it makes it quite uh, difficult to make those uh, subtle transitions between the tones and um, as I keep painting I also observe the color temperature if it's warm or cool and um, change my color mix in accordance with that.
Usually the cheekbone is a lot darker than the rest of the face and that's why I'm switching to a darker um, color mix to paint it. And here you see a complete uh, first layer of painting. Number five. Uh, it's important to draw and paint uh, from general uh, to specific. It means that I place basic forms first and then I begin refining them and adding details on top of my um, basic layer. It seems like I uh, keep repainting the entire thing and I really do just that but with every new layer um, the previous layer shows through just a little bit and it creates a visual harmony in a way because a lot of times uh, the paint is just too thin in the first layer and when I overlap it in a slightly different direction, it receives more depth and um, color that's impossible to achieve in one layer painting. Also, the highlights need to be painted a lot thicker and it can be achieved by layering paint. But basically in subsequent layers, I just keep refining the skin tones and finding uh, subtle transitions in the skin tones. I also observe the quality of my edges I do my best to soften them as much as possible and it's very difficult to paint around the lift areas because if paint gets on the leaf it's permanent and um, it's impossible to clean it up because it contaminates the leaf and uh, that's why I have to be super careful painting close to the lift areas. Because of that, I'm also limited with the edge development around the lift areas. Each part of the face has its unique volume and rotation and space. That's why when I say paint the cheekbones or the cheeks or the nose, I'm thinking how it rotates in space and creates volume. And I try to do the same uh, by changing the brush stroke and observing where I have the highlight, the middle tones, and the deepest uh, shadows. Usually the neck, the area under the chin, is the darkest area on a person because uh, the chin casts a shadow onto the neck. I need to observe that as I keep uh, mixing the colors. Here you see me painting the lock again and I just uh, clean up some of the edges, make them stronger and let other edges recede into the dress a little bit more. I paint the fabric flat uh, on purpose because I want it to be part of the background. 
I mean, you have to understand that uh, I can also paint the fabric the same way I painted the face. But I like this uh, juxtaposition between the flatness of space and uh, volume in the figure itself. And uh, that's what makes this uh, painting interesting. I also place my camera at uh, extreme angles sometimes because it's difficult to get to the easel when the camera is placed close to the painting itself. That's why you see uh, rather steep angles and uh, they don't quite represent the accurateness of shapes I usually achieve in my painting. Um, I also suggest uh, rotating your canvas or panel often because you want to place strokes in a particular direction and it's just impossible to do otherwise. Here I'm placing the reflected light on the hair and it's not um, very bright but it helps to show the rotation of the hair as well. It gives more volume and definition to the hair. Number six, um, this is where I finalize painting all the details and um, that's the point when I place the strongest highlights in just a few areas on the face, uh, hair and maybe the fabric. Here's a view of a completed painting. Uh, the color of the silver changes depending on the lighting conditions. I like this play of uh, light blue and yellow. It gives uh, positive feelings. And uh, the painting is titled Sunshine uh, to manifest the feelings of uh, joy and excitement we can experience. Uh, to buy this artwork and to see other pieces, you can go online and see my art at veronikasart.com. If you'd like uh, to receive notifications about future uploads, you can subscribe to my channel here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.